Hi. You're watching my fourth attempt at making a video for the Marin Gestalt XR. This is a 2023 bike, all new, and it is kind of a radical gravel bike. I'm going to tell you all about the specifications and the geometry on this bike so that you understand it and can maybe figure out if this is your new bike or if you need to pass. So stick with me as we go into the 2023 Marin Gestalt XR. So what is the 2023 Marin Gestalt XR? Well, to top it off, it is an aluminum frame, carbon fiber forked gravel bike, and a gravel bike I would say is that caters to mountain bikers. This is one of two different Gestalt Xs in Marin's lineup, and they do have another line of bikes just called Gestalts which are fairly different from these. But these Gestalt X bikes, this one, the Gestalt XR, is a $3,049 Canadian bike, or $23.99 USD. And the entry into the Gestalt X line is the Gestalt X10 at $19.99 Canadian, or $15.49 USD. Both those bikes, the Gestalt XR and Gestalt X10, share the same frame, different colors, but it's all about the spec on the bikes. So for half this video, we'll probably be talking about geometry stuff. That is going to be useful information for you, even if you're considering a Gestalt X10. The rest of the stuff I'm talking about is gonna be more directly about the specifications on this, the Gestalt XR. Weight on this size large Gestalt XR is 23.4 pounds. Drivetrain on the bike is a Shimano GRX 800 level clutched derailleur. A clutch, this is your clutch on your derailleur here, means that when the clutch is engaged, we have a very stiff derailleur. That keeps tension in the chain pretty tight so that when you're rolling over bumpy terrain, you're less likely to bounce a chain off of either your cassette or off your narrow wide chain ring. The on-off position is here, so that if you get a flat and have to remove your wheel, you're not battling all that tension. So, GRX 800 level, 1142 11 speed cassette on here, and a KMC 11 speed chain. That is paired with an FSA Gossamer Pro 175 millimeter crank set with their version of a narrow wide chain ring. The crank is attached using a threaded bottom bracket. Threaded is always gonna be nice because it makes servicing or replacing bottom bracket bearings a little bit easier than the press fit style. As we look at the back of the bike, this is a through axle frame, meaning that that is a 12 millimeter axle and it is going to help tie the frame to the hub in a way that gives a little bit more torsional stiffness and strength to the frame. Tires on this bike are 45C Schwalbe G1 Overland tires, and that is with a pretty standard gravel style tread. One thing to note is that Marin does tend to change uh, tire styles on bikes as availability comes up rather than having bikes sitting in the factory waiting for tires that might take a while to show up. So while this has the G1 Overland tires on here, I think that on their current uh, web spec on this bike, they're talking about a V-rubber um, equivalent tire. These are tubeless ready tires, um, but they're coming set up with a tube in here. So if you're gonna set them up tubeless, you would just need to buy some sealant, put that sealant in here, take out your tube, put a valve in, and you'd be set and ready to go. The advantage of going tubeless on a gravel bike is going to be the ability to run your tires softer without the issue of pinch flats, or at least of getting easy pinch flats. And that softer tire is going to be faster on gravel and more confidence inspiring because you will end up with better traction both for cornering, stopping, and just getting moving without basically having your wheels spinning. The rims that they equip on this bike are 25 millimeter wide internal. 
which pairs quite well with this 45 millimeter tire size and also means that if you maxed out the tires on this bike, which means going up to a 50C or a two inch wide tire, that you would still have a really, really appropriate rim width for that tire size. Moving up in tires is, I think, a worthwhile move on this bike to really get the most out of its capability um, because of its very capable and aggressive geometry. I'm just showing you that tire clearance. So up at the uh, seat stays here, I think you could easily put a larger than two inch tire in, but once we're down at the chain stays, I think that is where our limitation really lies for that two inch tire being the max tire size. Once again, I mentioned this is an aluminum frame through axle. It does have an interesting thing with the frame shape here, where it's got this sort of notch out shape in the seat tube. And that is to allow for a really short rear end of the bike while still allowing your tire clearance. So it's kind of a neat look. Um, it does bring up some limitations, which I will talk about a little bit later. We have water bottle mounts on the seat tube and another set on the down tube. So two mounts total on here on the frame. If you're used to last year's Guest Alt X, one of the sure signs that you're looking at the new one isn't just that really slack head tube angle, but they have changed the gusset shape here. And that I think is both for aesthetics and for overall strength. We did see from that last model, I think we saw one of the old version of uh, the Guest Alt X, or it was maybe a DSX, but with that same old gusset style that cracked where the gusset met the uh, top tube. So this new style I think is going to add some strength and it also gives a little bit more clean, up-to-date look. We're equipped with a dropper post. Once again, I mentioned this is a size large. This dropper post has 105 millimeters of drop. The seat post diameter, 27.2 millimeters. So your options for dropper posts are somewhat limited um, and your the amount of drop that you can put on there is also gonna be somewhat limited by the amount of uninterrupted seat tube you have. You of course wouldn't be able to put your post any lower than there because of the, the shape that we have in the seat tube of the frame. We have some really nice updated ways of doing the internal cable routing on this bike and both the rear derailleur, rear brake and dropper cable all enter the frame at this top section here. The dropper cable leaves the down tube and goes into the seat tube here. And then of course that goes into the bottom of the seat post to activate that. Going back to the saddle, the Marin saddles tend to, uh, well, there's a chance that they'll change from bike to bike. Um, I think that they have basically just been producing so many bikes that they have maybe an option or one of one or two different saddles that they'll put on these bikes, depending on availability in their factory. Head tube on this bike is a tapered head tube, of course, aluminum head tube on an aluminum frame. That means that there is a tapered steer tube on the fork inside there. And that fork is both carbon blades on the legs of the fork there, and then also a carbon steer tube. Uh, that carbon, the big reason for putting the carbon on an aluminum bike is going to be its ability to drown out some of the fine vibrations. So that vibration that'll go into your tires if you happen to be running your tires really hard, instead of it just being transmitted straight up through your fork, into your frame, into your hands, will be a little bit uh, dulled at least by having a carbon fiber fork. It is a through axle fork, so like the rear axle, that through axle is giving us a uh, stiffer, more torsionally strong, stiff connection of the front wheel to the fork. And on both ends, the another one of the benefits of having a through axle is that your wheels position in the dropout is absolute. So you have less chance of putting your wheel in and having it slightly off and causing a rubbing brake. So another reason to love a 
through axle um, attachment for your wheels onto your gravel bike. As we look at the stem here, this is where we start to see some of the really obvious differences. A 50 millimeter long stem, which each size of the Gestalt XR will have on there, would have been a completely unheard of thing just a few years ago on any bike with drop handlebars. Um, there's a lot of things about the spec on this bike and the geometry on this bike that a few years ago would have been scoffed as um, almost unrideable by old drop bar wisdom, but this bike proves that uh, it does indeed work and works really well in a gravel bar setup. Part of the reason that it has taken me so long to get a video done on these Marin Gestalt Xs, the 2023 versions, is the fact that I wanted to actually ride these in person uh, to understand what happens with the ride characteristics of a bike like this because I think it is as important a story as is the, uh, the incredible spec and value on a bike like this. So I think I mentioned that the bike is 23.4 pounds, um, $3,049. That is for a bike equipped with hydraulic Shimano disc brakes and the top of the line uh, gravel GRX group set. That is quite a standout. The other thing that is a standout is this incredibly progressive geometry. In fact, the only other bike uh, in existence um, in the mainstream world that has a geometry this radical is something like the Evil Bikes um, Chamois Hagar, which is a full carbon, very hardcore gravel bike, which has some mixed reviews online, but a lot of the recent reviews are starting to become very positive as reviewers have kind of opened their minds to, uh, to not compare it to everything else and to actually look for what this kind of geometry does differently or better than a road-inspired old-school uh, gravel bike geometry. So we have, back to the spec, a 50 millimeter stem. We have handlebars on here that are called 480 millimeter wide handlebars, but that distance is basically from hood to hood. If we actually measure our drops here, so from center of the drop here to there, instead of being 480 millimeters, that is 560 millimeters wide. So a fairly pronounced flare in the handlebar. There are wider handlebars, but still sticking with this thing, um, keeping you looking kind of normal rather than spread eagle, like some of the, the really wide gravel handlebars. This is getting pretty wide and that once again, that width combined with that short stem is what is allowing us to get really nice bike handling characteristics. The bar tape is a fairly rubbery texture, um, soft sort of a bar tape, so a really nice feel. Um, a lot of the spec on this bike is shared with the Marin Headlands too. That is the carbon gravel bike with a more traditional geometry that I have spent the last three years on. So I can speak to a lot of these things, the um, shorter stem, the handlebars, um, the spec on this bike working incredibly well. Um, in my many years of riding drop handlebars before getting uh, into a Marine Headlands as my drop bar bike, I was on older road bikes with Shimano 105, Altegra, or even Durace, and I would say that the spec on this bike has worked better, has worked more reliably and consistently, and these hydraulic brakes on here have been incredibly smooth, powerful, reliable, um, no matter the conditions. So everything about the spec on this bike I think is easy to, to rave about. Um, so I can pass that along at least. If you're wondering about spec, Yep, incredibly good, especially for about 3,000 bucks. This is about a thousand bucks cheaper than what I've seen from other companies offering that top of the line GRX 800 level 11 speed drivetrain. As we come back around to the fork here, we see that there are these three nubbins on each fork leg. 
That is gonna be for loading things like anything cages, basically big water bottle cages that you can mount whatever uh, on the side of your fork if you choose to use this bike as a bike packing bike. We have 160 millimeter rotors on here, front and rear. So nice to see that they're not doing the sort of roadie style rotors of 140 millimeters because you definitely will be able to get this bike into situations where that larger rotor is going to be uh, almost a necessity to sort of keep this thing under control. Coming back around, just showing you some of the details on this side of the frame. We do have this sort of lighter cream to slightly darker tan uh, fade. This thing looks incredible in person, I must say. I'm a big fan of the aesthetics. Coming back to the back here, I talked about those nubbins on the fork. We do also have threaded bosses on the dropouts here, and we have two of them, as well as then in the bridge between the seat stays and these nubbins just below the collar on the seat post. So this is set up that you could be putting fenders or a pannier rack on without any issue, even though pannier racks are becoming less common. Um, there's never a problem with having more mounting points for different types of bags or whatever you choose to do on here. That is an external bottom bracket we're looking at, those or a threaded bottom bracket with an external BB uh, setup on these FSA cranks. I don't think that there's any reason to need to change cranks. You have replaceable chain rings here, so it, uh, it is a high enough quality set of cranks and I have roughly the same ones on my headlands and they work. They haven't come loose um, in spite of piles and piles of miles on bumpy gravel, single track and asphalt. So that is the spec on this bike. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is geometry because that is really where another one of the things beyond the amazing value and performance of this bike. Geometry is where this bike shows its difference from the rest of the bikes in the market as well as what makes it an extremely attractive buy for somebody who is primarily a mountain biker and wants to feel at home on their gravel bike. So much of what makes the geometry on this bike so appealing for mountain bikers is the fact that it really is a geometry inspired by modern mountain bike geometry. Key numbers that we're looking at are a 67 and a half degree head tube angle. So for those not familiar, that 67 and a half, that is this angle. If we were talking about a traditional geometry bike, that would be, let's see, more straight up and down. So by being a slack 67 and a half, it's putting the wheel further out ahead of you. And as I mentioned before, that was something that um, was basically considered something that wouldn't even work on drop bar bikes in the past. And this bike is breaking a lot of those old rules that just not many people had basically been worried about testing. They had just sort of carried on with old traditional thinking saying you needed a steep head tube angle. Um, and they didn't want to test it. So very slack head tube angle at 67 and a half degrees. The only bike I know of on the market that you can find sort of through mainstream sources that is any slacker is that Evil Bikes Shami Hager I talked about. And that is, I believe theirs is just shy of 67 degrees. So a touch slacker again. The seat tube angle, so the angle that that tube is making there, is about a degree steeper at about 74 degrees on most sizes in this bike. So that once again takes inspiration from what's happening on mountain bikes where they're making for a longer frame, that sort of distance there is longer on modern mountain bikes, steeper seat tube angle, so the seat more directly above the cranks and then a slacker head tube angle. All those things add up to a bike where you are basically going to be able to climb um, steeper hills without wheeling because your seat's a tad further forward in the in the overall geometry and descending becomes more stable 
and less likely to feel like you're going to get tossed over the bars because your wheel is further out front of you. Other things to look at with geometry are this bike has an extremely short rear end. So the chainstay length, which is axle to center of your cranks there, 425 millimeters. Um, and so it's that short chainstay um, combined with a fairly generous allowance for tires is the reason that we have this cutout in the seat tube. So that slack head tube angle, one thing I would warn you of on this bike is if you come from a road bike world, this is going to feel weird. And this is what I wanted to experience by riding this bike in person. This bike really feels like it wants to carve. You aren't steering the bike by just turning your handlebar. It's way more a case like a modern mountain bike where you're trying to lean the bike to get it to turn. Um, that is weird for people who are used to old school drop bar bikes, but it also feels really, really cool and more directly crosses over with the way that you ride a modern mountain bike. So that's where I think it's way easier for someone to hop off the mountain bike onto this and just feel at home and not feel like their drop bar bike wants to hurt them. The one thing I would say about the geometry on this bike is that the stack, and the stack is a vertical measurement if we go from center of our cranks to that section of our frame, top of the um, head tube. So if we just go back and then go straight down, that vertical measurement is our stack. This is a little bit of a lower stack on this bike and I tried riding it with the bars low down on with the spacers here and higher up and the one thing I would say is the more aggressive lower handlebar uh, setup does make the bike handle a touch better so having a bit more weight on your front wheel uh, complements that uh, slacker head tube angle. Um, and for people that wanted a really tall front end, I, I don't think that they would feel comfortable, especially at low speeds, um, having a tall front end with a slack front end on a bike like this. It just, you feel like there's a noticeable amount of steering flop happening, which is just that sense that your wheel doesn't want to stay centered. It kind of wants to go off to one side or the other. Like I say, as soon as you have more weight on your handlebars, that sensation kind of disappears and turns into that sensation where your bike actually wants to carve rather than to um, turn by turning your, turning your handlebars like a steering wheel. So that is a little bit about the spec on this bike. It's who it's gonna suit, which is largely gonna be mountain bikers. Some of the things to know about the way that that slack head tube angle is going to affect the handling I hope you can see the fact that this finish on this bike is quite beautiful. This faded tan beige sort of thing looks really good. The aluminum welding on here is really, really nice and smooth. So there's nothing as far as quality goes that should uh, scare anybody off. Spec, incredible for a $3,000 Canadian bike. Um, what do you think? Is this a bike that you would consider? What do you think of the aesthetics? Um, and have you seen one of these in person? Because the one thing that I would say is looking at this bike on the Marin website, the geometry looks awkward on there when you just have a side profile shot against the white background. But as soon as you see it in person, it sort of reads in real life as a much more aesthetically appealing bike. So what do you think? Gestalt XR, a bike for you? It's XR, it's extra rad. I sort of forgot to go into the sizing thing. For a lot of people, you're gonna be looking at this bike, maybe not even able to view one in your local bike shop if you're not in the area, in the Cochrane Calgary area where we are in Alberta. Um, if you're looking at the geometry chart, you are going to be struggling, if you're used to looking at road bike geometry, to try and figure out where you fit on the bikes. I would say, for one thing, trust in what Marin has said as far as their sizing goes. I do agree with them. Having tried this, having ridden traditional frames, 
that their small, medium, large, extra large sizing will fit with what most people consider small, medium, and large. Uh, on this one, I would say small is 5'2 to 5'5 five, five, or 5'6, five, medium 5'6 to 5'10, large 5'10 to 6'2, and extra large 6'2 to maybe 6'5, something like that. One thing considering the sizing and the geometry is I think that this is a really nice option for smaller riders because this slack head tube angle has meant that we no longer have a worry about toe overlap. Our front wheel is far enough forward um, that for people who are riding like on 52, 54 centimeter bikes on traditional setups, when they turn their handlebar with their foot being on the pedal, they have a chance of their toe and that tire uh, basically contacting. As you can see, um, we've got a fair amount of distance there between any kind of foot in a realistic position on the pedal and where your front wheel would be. So a really nice option for smaller riders to get an aggressive bike that they won't be battling with toe overlap. So even if they weren't a mountain biker primarily, they just wanted a drop bar bike for over, um, overland, um, bike exploring, gravel, whatever it is they're gonna do. I think that feature alone of not suffering from toe overlap is going to be a really nice feature. The one thing to consider then though, is because of this cutout that we have here and because of the dropper post, on a size small, we're not gonna have a ton of room here. So you may have to put some thought into um, or consider the fact that you have very little room to play with your saddle height there. Um, I don't know what the answer is to that problem. You may end up um, in a situation where you don't get to use the full amount of stroke in the dropper post or having to change dropper posts. Um, but otherwise, I think that that geometry thing of no toe overlap is going to be a really important benefit to small riders. For taller riders, as I mentioned, that stack there, if you happen to have really long legs and so you're riding your seat post quite tall, you may find that the front end um, feels a bit low for you. So just a consideration for fit on this bike. I fit beautifully on a Marin Headlands in a size large, and I found the front end to feel a little bit low, um, especially when I had it just with at least one more spacer above the stem here uh, to get the front end to feel weighted enough to ride well. Um, that said, this is still a bike that I am so intrigued by that I may very well end up quote unquote downgrading from a carbon bike to an alloy bike because I want to be able to spend time on a bike like this and really understand all the subtleties and nuances of a bike that is going to be this capable when it comes to technical single track type stuff and to see how that relates to its abilities when it's being used on pavement or on smoother gravel. So I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss out on that little bit of conversation. And I have a little thing here. If anyone at Marin is paying attention, I have some additional comments about this bike. Um, the rear end of this bike being 425 millimeters long, I think they could stand with making the rear end longer so that they wouldn't have to do this cutout in the seat tube, which, and then also creating more um, clearance for a larger tire. Because this bike has a geometry that is so capable I personally think that you should be able to run up to a 2.1 or a 2.2 inch size tire so that this would turn into a drop bar, um, really, really getting to halfway point between an XC bike and a gravel bike. Uh, seeing Dylan Johnson and the fact that he rode a drop bar bike in the Leadville race this year, um, I think that this bike would be a perfect one to sort of take up to that, almost that level of uh, drop bar, cross country, fully rigid kind of a bike. So they should add some tire clearance to do it. If they lengthened out the rear end, 
Um, that would also then mean that you would naturally have more weight on your handlebars and it would dull some of those weird sensations that you have with the slack head tube angle. Um, if the seat tube didn't have that cut out there and if they made it 30.9 uh, diameter, you could put a massive mountain bike dropper post on there and that would then increase the capability of the bike that much more. I would even either make the head tube longer or I would put a suspension corrected fork on here, so essentially a fork that is say a couple inches longer than this fork. Um, and in that case, then, it could be run as a fully rigid or as a Dylan Johnson-esque style um, Leadville 100 um, ultra hardcore gravel or one of those mixed um, surface races where you really are contemplating whether or not to use a cross-country mountain bike or a gravel bike. Um, so, if anybody from Marin cares, or if anybody knows somebody that works at Marin, knows Matt Sipes, the product designer, please let them know because I personally think that that is the one place that they could make a new category of bikes where this could then be better than something like a salsa cutthroat and get even um, to stepping ahead of the evil chamois Hager. Um, okay, I think that's about it then. I hope you found this useful. My voice has been called one of the most boring voices on YouTube, so I hope I didn't put you to sleep. Unless you're having a hard time sleeping, then I hope I did put you to sleep. And get out there, ride your bike, and we'll talk to you next time.